Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you're at out there on this fine Thursday. It is the Earthmaster back here on this, again, Thursday, September 21st, 2023, Friday, tomorrow, 1134 a.m. California time. Latest activity on the globe here. Uh, shows a 4.4 around the Indonesia Islands area. That is the latest earthquake on the map, on the globe. Looking at space weather here real quick. Did have another strong M flare overnight from our culprit sunspot 3435, which has been a source of numerous large flares here in the past couple days. Uh, the last one in M8.7. That's a pretty large flare. Uh, did produce a uh, quite the radio blackout across the central Atlantic over here. It was just a couple hours ago. I still think we have the uh, potential to see some X flare. Uh, movement from that uh, sunspot kind of mentioning it and it looks like we're advancing towards that x flare probability with a 10 percent chance now today 60 percent chance for m flare activity and c flare remains of course 99 percent there is that x flare or a uh, large m flare almost peaked out into the x flare category earlier this morning uh, let's go ahead and check out the uh, magnetogram image here 3435 that's going to be this large regional sunspot here along with 3438 companion sunspot either way uh, both of these regions here look fairly dynamic the main one of course 3435 the source of numerous m flares and that x flare potential remains elevated here uh, within that core of that sunspot uh, this one over here does have some dynamics set up with it as well in terms of complexity and uh, for the most part uh, maybe potentially this region down here as well, but we'll watch this. The, re the reason why I say this is, could be concerning is because of the, uh, well, the Earth-Sun plane almost directly lined up right now. Anything that does blast off here, as far as a large X-flare, subsequent CME will be uh, definitely impactful on the Earth because it is almost a bullseye shot right now. Looking directly at us here on this planet, so we'll keep an eye on this area for some stronger flaring soon uh let's see what else we got right now we don't have anything major headed this way as far as any uh you know elevated aurora conditions in the coming days but again that could all that could all change in a blink of an eye all right let's get back to uh, earthquake activity here real quick checking out the latest 24-hour map here from the usgs it does show some activity here across the kermadec islands earlier this morning we did see a 5.7 just north here uh, into the uh, Kermadec Trench. It looks like pretty shallow earthquake here, point or 4.1 kilometers for this earthquake. Of course, New Zealand did see some activity here a couple days ago. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the latest information here from the GeoNet servers and see what's going on. Uh, 2.8 North Island about two hours ago. There's that 4.0 from yesterday uh, down, on, down along the South Island area. Going to double check the uh, earthquake drums here. There's that uh, signature of that 5.7 up along the Kermadec Trench. That's going to show up pretty nicely, of course, on the North Island stations. The red dot here is not where the earthquake struck, but where the seismograph stations are positioned out there across the New Zealand area. And uh, let's see here. There's that aftershock activity still continuing. South Island region following that... Uh, well, GeoNet reporting a 6.0 a couple days ago. Looks like aftershock activity is continuing uh, even to this hour. So it's uh, quite quite a bit of aftershock activity kicking up there. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here around the globe, around the flat scale model Earth. Hawaii, you know, get some movement out here across the Pahala area. The latest earthquake, a 2.8. Kilauea Volcano, well, that is probably currently paused still, or as the USGS is using the word stopped. Um, so I don't know if there is a difference between paused and stopped. Who knows? We'll have to see how this plays out in terms of uh, further future eruption activity there across Kilauea Volcano. Here's a weekly update, which was put out a couple days ago. So, you know, it doesn't look like anything has um, changed there since the uh, ending of the eruption back on the 16th of September. Kilauea Volcano, very active 
volcano, one of the one of the more active volcanoes here on this planet. And it does come and go. It takes a little break and then it kicks back up. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, latest information here across the area of Kilauea Volcano. This is from the USGS site here. Tilt meters is a good indicator of uh, potentially keeping an eye on a uh, volcano. Now, over the past few hours or so, we've seen a drastic increase here in inflation uh, across the um, Kilauea Summit area. Uh, at least on that map. Let me let me go back here to that. Where did we go? Um, so what we're seeing is probably right about here, but notice that decline here in inflation, of course, with, uh, the magma going up to the surface and spewing out into lava, of course, there's going to be deflation. That's what we've seen right here, but it looks like we're starting to get a little bit further inflation here. We'll have to keep an eye on that, um, just here within the last few hours or so. Earthquake activity. Let's see what we got. There's not a whole lot of earthquake activity popping off there. It looks like maybe a couple local around the Kilauea volcano, but for the most part, um, just taking a little break. I think anyway. Uh, the cams out here, of course, going to continue to show some volcanic gases as things are still, uh, you know, somewhat warm. I think warms the understatement down below the surface here. All right, getting back to the uh, earthquake activity here across the Southern California area. A handful of smaller quakes out there around the uh, Elsinore Fault, north of Marietta, and also around the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Really not seeing anything major going on here across California area for now. Uh, let's bring up the 2.5 map and above. Shows a handful of quakes, including a 2.9 in the uh, San Jose area. Looks like that's on the um, uh, Monte Vista, Vista Shannon Fault. I don't know where that went to. Yep, Shannon Fault Zone. And uh, a little bit of activity up north here as well. North of Lake Tahoe, this earthquake activity occurring uh, outside the Portola area. With a handful of smaller quakes in there. Most of those, uh, well, it looks like they're split between yesterday and today. But uh, for the most part, Things look typical out here across California. One earthquake out uh, south of Bend, out around the Newberry Volcano. Very small earthquake. Mount St. Helens still seeing a, you know, kind of a handful of smaller quakes. And up around the Mount Rainier area, mostly scattered movement here across the southern area of the Mount Rainier region. Looking out here towards the Long Ve or the uh, Super Volcano. Long Valley, of course, in California, but this is the Yellowstone area. Looks like a little bit of movement here. Let's go ahead and see what we got on the latest seismograph stations here across the area. Looks like that movement's going to be right here at the southern, kind of the southern edge of the um, caldera, which is in this black uh, black line. Going to be this movement right here. A couple, couple small earthquakes in the last few hours, nothing major. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here as we move along. Typical movement out here across the uh, Oklahoma and Texas area. One earthquake out in New Madrid Seismic Zone, Hayward, Missouri, 1.8. That earthquake coming in yesterday, so not a whole lot of movement uh, out here across the eastern portion of the country for now. And um, a lot of times these, um, let's see if I can get these to pull up here. Um, these little bitty quakes, they'll take like a day or two to pop up on the map. But as far as any unusual earthquake activity out here, most of these seismograph stations are pretty quiet. Um, that one's obviously quiet. Uh, these are all seismograph stations positioned uh, around the eastern portion of the country. And as you can see, if there was indeed earthquake activity out here, I think we would see it across some of these seismograph stations. And... It's just not happening. They all look pretty quiet. All right, moving back on here to the world view. A little slight activity here across Puerto Rico. Nothing major going on. Um, in fact, it looks just like a scattered type of day of earthquake activity. Really no main regions out here of increasing swarming. Uh, this activity across the Indonesia Islands area is very typical. 
uh, across this region. Fours and threes kicking off there today. Not a whole lot going on through Japan. Looks like a couple of smaller quakes up here in the last 24 hours. And South America region, slight uptick, I would say, following that divergent activity out here uh, yesterday. We did see some, uh, uh, some oceanic uh, divergent boundary action out here. Quite a few quakes, in fact, uh, including a six-pointer out here around the uh, East Pacific rise. That uh, will add a little bit of strain out here across the South America region. Looks like, again, it looks like a little bit of slight elevated activity here up along the Peru Chile Trench. So, continuing to watch that area, it is showing some signs out there, some elevated movement out here across Turkey and areas around the Middle East. Well, threes and fours are the magic number. Looks like another earthquake up north here, 3.7. Uh, let's see exactly where that's at. World Earthquake Map, up around the Finland and the Russia border region. One earthquake way north of the Iceland area, or the Jan Mayen Island area. It looks like uh, a little bit of movement kicking up there. All right, Storm Prediction Center. Well, last night was pretty crazy. We had a, a uh, almost like a dry line event kick up here in northern california we had a lot of cooler drier air coming down from the north and here in the sacramento valley it was kind of kind of moist i guess and warmer and it kicked up some thunderstorms uh last night around about 10 11 o'clock at night last night here and uh, today we're left with uh windier cooler conditions and drier goodness we got 28 percent humidity and a dew point of 41 degrees goodness that's some dry conditions and that type of setup out here, this um, low pressure parked over, uh, looks like mainly Eastern Oregon. We are getting the effects of that much cooler temperatures. That's going to be stirring up some severe weather potential out here as that cooler, drier air interacts with the warmer moisture out here across the Southern Plains. And a look at the, um, where'd it go? Storm Prediction Center. Here we go. Uh, the outlook here for today does show some increasing severe weather threat uh, across portions of the plains. A lot of these areas need some rainfall, so it looks like you guys are going to get some rain. Uh, but the severe weather threat is somewhat elevated today with a 5% chance of tornado probability there in the uh, kind of the darker red color, brown color. Uh, that includes portions of Nebraska and Kansas. Also 2% chance here around Dallas, Texas and portions of uh, southern Oklahoma. Uh, some big time hail threat out there as well, up here around Nebraska and Kansas. So yeah, it's, you know, similar to what we would see in the springtime, uh, but it's heading into fall. Fall can be a severe weather season out here across this area of the country. And it looks like over the next couple days here, that severe weather threat is going to remain elevated uh, across a good portion out here where they need the rain. So you guys are going to get some rain, but the severe weather threat is going to remain elevated as well. All right, National Hurricane Center out here. Looks like they finally picked up a little bit on tropical or potential tropical cyclone 16. Now, we were watching this here on the GFS model. Uh, let me show you guys here real quick. Um, let's go back here. Just a little gnat in here. Uh, over here across the southeastern portion of the states, we've got some type of tropical development building right there. And it's still, it's been pretty consistent over the past few model runs of showing some signs of an increasing intensity. And um, we'll continue to watch that. It looks like the uh, definitely National Hurricane Center has picked up on it slightly. Um, there are some rainfall threats. The warnings in the cones right now. Well, there's a, um, looks like tropical storm warnings going to be issued here for portion uh, portions here of the, uh, the eastern seaboard area uh, doesn't look like it's going to peak up into the hurricane status not enough time for that to uh, build up but there's some tropical storm warnings out here and uh, we'll continue to watch that as it will make its way northward u.s rainfall uh, 
Looks like most of the rain is going to hold off here across the Atlantic, but there is some potential, uh, some heavy duty rain across portions of the North Carolina region and into Virginia. All right, so what else we got here? Anything, uh, anything major building up out here as far as long-term patterns go? Let's check out the assembles here. There's that deep low pressure trough out in the west coast. This troughing normally will pull up warmer air, but also at the same time, you got that severe weather threat interacting with the uh, cooler, drier air. And um, looks like we got another deep trough out here uh, across the western portion of the states. Going to bring in some rainfall chances and uh, cooler weather uh, sometime early next week. Following that, uh, well, it's a ways out, but it looks like cooler weather wants to sit in out here across the west coast, up north, into Canada. Yeah, you guys are going to cook. With that high pressure remaining parked up there, which, by my terms, I think that's okay because, I'm, well, I'm not there right now. <laughs> I'm out here where the uh, cooler weather needs to be. All right, uh, anything else? I think that's about it, folks. Um, again, latest information you can find out uh, through Tropical Tidbits, or you could go through uh, the National Hurricane Center as far as the uh, latest information on any hurricanes out there or potential hurricanes. Uh, the model guide for this potential Tropical Cyclone 16 Shows it mostly uh, into the uh, tropical storm category. Got one stretching up here to category one, but I don't know if that's going to, you know, ring true or not. But we'll continue to watch it and check back on it for the latest updates. Alrighty, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. Unless something major happens. I don't know. There's a lot of wind in the air creating a little static out here, but it's also a change of the change of the seasons upon us i love it i love fall time love winter good riddance to summer we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight take care